This week I have for you two cute little boxes. These are just two possibilities of what you could make using the supplies. I mainly use the bakery box template with um, some foil papers, this pink flourish, and this aqua flourish. And I also used really pretty um, pearl, silver, silver pearl butterfly dazzles. They're lacy butterflies. So I'm going to demonstrate making this box right here. And this has a little tag on the front. On the inside, I've actually lined the bottom with some of the pink foil paper. This butterfly is kind of fluttering its wings, and that's backed on the foil paper. And this one, I've done a little special treatment with the doily and just trying to trim it so that it'll fit flatly on this box and then some ribbon and on the side I've put Happy Easter and the happy comes from the dazzle sheet and the Easter I just had to write under there but these not only make great gift boxes for Easter but any time of year and to just cheer up a friend give a little treat if you love baking those mini cupcakes they fit perfectly in there so here are the supplies I'm going to use to make these Easter boxes this is the confetti ribbon set and has 12 different ribbons, all sorts of colors, um, and they actually match pretty well with these aqua flourishes and pink flourishes. Foil paper, which I'm going to use to make the actual boxes themselves. I'm also using the mini bakery box template, which is a favorite of mine. It makes this really cute little bakery box. It's pretty adorable. And it has some uh, window shapes that you can choose from over here to kind of give your bakery boxes that clear window look. Speaking of which, this is a clear piece of acetate. And the one in the bundle is the 12 by 12 mother themed one, which has this um, a banner across the top. And it's all about mother. I've just gone, gone ahead and cut that part off, so I just have this clear piece of acetate and I'm just going to use a little section of it to create that clear window. And last but not least, the silver pearl lacy butterflies dazzles. And you can see how pretty they are. Very sparkly and glittery. And they do have a greeting on here. Happy thoughts. And the rest of it's some pretty lacy butterflies. A lacy doily and another um, large butterfly up here as well as these pretty borders. So let's get started. Now I'm not showing you how to do the whole pink box, but I do want to point out this technique that I've used with the silver pearl butterfly dazzles. So I'm using this large silver doily and I'm just placing it on the top. This box does not have a window. And here's the front of it. So I'm placing it on the top of the box and I want it to go just right about there. Okay, now I'm going to make some cuts. I'm cutting straight right here in line with the box. And then I can fold that part down and stick that down and then I can fold the side down and trim that little corner here now you could save this you could put it on another corner of the box I'm going to place it on the back just as an accent, maybe I'll put it like this. Since it is a perfect right angle, it fits in any of the corners, which I love. And that's how I got the round dazzle to be on this, um, well, I guess it's a flat surface on this three-dimensional box. And it's a fun technique you can use with pretty much any of the large dazzles if you want to them to wrap around your corners or anything like that. So really simple, really fun, and lots of dazzles to choose from on that one. 
So I'm gonna use the Aqua Flourishes foil paper first. And I'm gonna actually turn it over to the back. Taking my template, and I'm gonna place it in the top left corner here, just so I can make maximize the use of my pretty foil paper. Okay, so now it's time to trace with a pencil. And remember to trace around all the outside lines as well as the fold lines. And some of them are cut lines and they'll be marked on the template as such. So, helpful to use the guide marks here. Okay, so I'm done tracing my bakery box. And you'll notice I did not trace the windows because those are optional and you can actually switch out any of these shapes to um, replace that shape. And I actually want to use this um, square window, which has the nice rounded edges. So I'm going to center that in the middle of the top part of my box. And handy to have top half labeled on the template. So let me center this in that square right about there and then just trace my window that looks pretty good and if you look closely you'll notice I've labeled the cut line C just to keep everything nice and clear um, everything else is either the outside line which you will obviously cut or a fold line so those are C's and then right here on the template it says cut to point so you're actually going to cut to this imaginary line right here so it's kind of just easier to kind of sketch that in so that when I'm cutting I can clearly see where to cut so cut there and there and I'm just labeling this for your convenience so these will cut to the edge these two sides have slits in them and you'll see on the template it says slit A and slit B so those will be cut but do not cut all the way across because those are just supposed to be little slots and those will um, the these tabs will insert into those slots once the box is all assembled and you'll see that more clearly once we get this cut out so I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to score on the fold lines. So here's my box shape all cut out and I also scored the fold lines. And the easiest way to do that is to take your ruler with a metal edge, place it along that fold line, take your um, retractable knife and make sure it's the back side of the knife and just run it along the ruler and that'll kind of score the, the line so that when you fold it, it folds really sharply as you can kind of see there it makes a really nice box fold and do that for all the fold lines and then kind of fold and unfold along the lines to kind of see how your box is going to look one note I do want to make is if you have a 12 by 12 sheet of this cardstock this foil cardstock you can make at least two boxes and you can make three, just one of them is going to have a little bit uh, narrower sides. And that's pretty easy to kind of center the template and just kind of trim off the tiny little bit that you'll need to to fit three boxes on one sheet, which I think is a great deal. So I've folded these flaps in, and this is kind of how it's going to come together. Just like a bakery box and with some glue and zots you'll have a perfect little box and it has a perfect little opening now for the window I've actually cut a piece of the clear acetate material which I have right here 
It's about an inch and three quarters square. And the easiest way to attach this is with Zots. My best friend Zots. <laughs> I use this on almost every project. Um, I'm just going to apply a Zot to each of the four corners. The very corner of the window. What will end up being our window. And the Zots go on really easily to the acetate. So I'm, I'm pressing the clear acetate onto the little glue dot and lifting off. There we go. Alright, now centering our window. As long as it's covered, it's perfect. Alright, so there is the clear little bakery box window in the top there. Very cute. So I'm going to assemble this bottom part by inserting these little tabs into the slots. Now you might need to make the slots slightly bigger depending on if on how wide you cut them. <clears throat> Let's see if these will fit. You know, it's almost going to fit. You can see it coming through here. Looks like I need a tiny bit more space. So I'm going to cut the slit a little bit bigger. And do that on all of them. It doesn't hurt to have it a tiny bit bigger so that you have some room to put those tabs in. So I'm bringing it over the outside of this side piece and inserting it into the slits here. And then for the top, I'm going to fold it like this with these side wings on the outside and go ahead and glue this with glue stick. Alright, so the other thing I've done to these inside tabs is I've just put a long piece of clear tape over those to secure them. You won't probably need to do glue or glue stick or anything, but the, um, the, the tabs hold pretty well on their own, but just to give them a little help, I put a piece of tape over them. And these I just did with the regular glue stick, um, and I just did a little bit more generous um, with the glue since the foil is a slick surface. So here is the finished plain box. Now we're going to decorate it up a little bit. So now I'm using my lacy butterfly dazzles and I've peeled this one off right here and I'm placing it on the pink flourishes foil and I'm going to place it so that the antenna are kind of going off the paper here and then I'm just going to cut around it and then when I get to this part I can just lift the antenna a little bit so I can kind of cut behind it a little more easily. So after I've cut this out, I kind of bended it back on both sides. Since it is the, the thick foil cardstock, it will uh, retain its shape if you kind of manipulate it with your fingers a little bit. So now I have a cute little 3D butterfly and I'm going to stick it on the top of my box. Kind of going off the corner here and that'll just go on with zots. So now I've cut about eight inches of this sheer polka dot ribbon and I want this to go around the front three sides of my box. I don't want it to go around the back because I want the recipient to be able to open the box without having to untie or um, be afraid of ruining the pretty ribbon on the box. So I'm going to <clears throat> open the box pretty wide here and place my ribbon around and then I'm going to make sure the ribbon's pretty tight on the edges and then I'm going to tape the ends to the insides of these flaps just with clear tape. And you can also um, put a few zots around the outside to help secure it as well. 
Okay, so this is what the inside looks like. Got a little bit longer end on that side, but that's okay. It's on the inside. No one will know. And then I'm going to put this um, iridescent aqua ribbon on top of the pink. And this time I'm going to keep it on the outside, so I'm not going to tuck it under. Because this is a little bit more bulky, I don't want it to kind of add more bulk on the insides of the flaps. So what I'm going to do, and I've cut the end of this with the Imaginist ribbon cutter, so the ends will not fray since they're melted shut. <clears throat> and this is going to be exactly six and a quarter inches long. So right there. And I might just try and make a little mark here if I can. So open the ribbon cutter and place it right there. I'm actually going to wrap it along the sides of the ribbon cutter. So I'm holding it on both sides and then closing it. The light means that the wire is hot and wait a few seconds and then press down and my ribbon is perfectly cut. <clears throat> so see how this fits along the box pretty perfectly. So I'm just going to um, attach this ribbon with zots or you can do it with zips. Either way works and um, I'll be almost done with my box. Okay, so I've created a little tag for my box and it's from the template. Let's see, it's right here. Here's the tag shape I used. I cut it out of the pink flourishes foil and I just wrote two on there with a permanent marker. Then I punched a hole in the top with this uh, 1 8 inch hole punch. You could use a full size hole punch. I just like the 1 8 inch because this tag is so tiny. Um, I don't like how the larger hole kind of takes up the whole tag. And then I've knotted a little piece of the aqua metallic ribbon through the tag, placed a piece of foam tape on the back, and I'm just going to put this on the front of my box, kind of at an angle there. So there's your little recipient tag, and now your box is almost done. One more step to add a little more um, fancifulness, I guess you could say, to the inside of the box. I'm actually going to put a square of foil paper on the bottom of my box. So I've cut this two inch square of the pink flourish foil and I've chopped just a tiny bit off the edge so that it'll fit on the inside of my two inch square box. And I'm just going to set it in the bottom and looks like it fits perfectly. Press that down. So now I'm done with my all occasion box. It could be Easter, birthday, anything you want to give a little gift. In the savings bundle you'll find the 12 by 12 Aqua Flourishes foil paper which is this right here. Also the Pink Flourishes foil, and these are a really heavy cardstock weight, so perfect for making 3D objects such as boxes. And the Confetti ribbon set, as well as the Mini Bakery Box template, a 12 by 12 acetate, um, I'm trying to wiggle it around because it's perfectly clear, but yours will be a 12 by 12. This one's a little bit smaller because I've cut off the top border, which is a, a mother theme which is handy because Mother's Day is, you know, coming up. Um, and then there's also the Lacy Butterfly Dazzles in a really pretty pearl silver finish. So I hope you enjoy using all these supplies and making fun, cute little boxes.